what it was like covering 9-11 and oh. that morning. And I'm just curious from your perspective, because you and I have never spoken about this. Yeah. Tell me what it was like for you personally to be there or to be on your way to work when this happened. No, I was in because I used to get make sure I got in uh, to, to watch Good Morning America uh, and, and Today Show. And, yeah. but, and, and, uh, <laughs> Because I had nine monitors on my wall, you know, which, which by the way, does create ADD, if you have any doubts. If you have nine television sets on all day long. Uh, so I was, I was in the office and was doing some work um, in the office and sort of watching the monitors. And I remember looking up. We were in commercial break about 8.45, 8.47. Uh, we were actually in commercial break. And I saw it on CNN. I saw smoke coming out of one of the, the towers from, from a helicopter shot. And I thought, what is that? And I turned on the volume because I had these little switches I could turn on the volume. And, and nobody knew quite what it was. And there was reports about an airplane or something. And then we came back out of commercial and went to special report right away. And Charlie and Diane were doing Good Morning America. Started talking about it. And then I was watching live as the second plane flew in. And it was clear at that moment that this, this was a uh, concerted attack. This was not an accident of some sort. Um, look, thinking back on it, um, there were um, two or three things that happened at the same time internally. Uh, one of them was, this is a huge story. I did, in fairness to me, but I'm sure a lot of people did, right after the second plane hit, I thought, this is terrorism, it's probably Al-Qaeda. Because we'd done a lot of work. You remember John Miller, our correspondent, had gone in and gotten an interview in 97 that we'd aired. Uh, and so we'd done a lot of work on Al-Qaeda and talked a lot about it. And I thought that at the beginning. So I thought, this is a huge story. We don't know how big a story it is. Uh, but uh, we've got to summon all the troops and figure out all the logistics you have to figure out and get the people in place and report it at the same time. So there was a, a very large just sort of task to be dealt with. At the same time, it was very emotional because the initial thoughts, if you recall, that we calculated how many people worked in those two towers, we thought actually initially that it would be a much larger number than it ended up being. I mean, we were imagining you know, thousands and thousands of people in this terrible situation. We started getting reports back, as I'm sure you did, that people were jumping. I mean, I remember when somebody said there were actually people jumping out of those towers. And it was just chilling. And one of the, the, and it, the way it came to me, this is the way it works. It came to me, there are people jumping in the towers. Should we show it? And I said, no. Why would we ever show that? You can report it on the air, because people deserve to know that. But the notion you'd show this would be barbaric. But the other thing that I really felt strongly, Katie, and you probably did too, is what we expect a journalist at that moment is a lot. Because it's a, it's a very emotional time, and you actually want to be with your loved ones, and you want to be consoling them and getting consoled. And it's the last thing you can do. You're full out, and you're working nonstop and trying your best to get the story and get it right and, and put, put some order out of the chaos. And that was a particular story where the government sort of went missing for a while. You know, The government wasn't in a position to tell us what was going on and the scope of it, the scale of it. <clears throat> what, what we could expect next or whatever. Uh, and it really fell to the media, to a large degree, to sort of talk to the nation and say, this is what we know, this is what we don't know, you know, this is what we think is going on, to try to help people come to some terms with this searing of that. I mean, it, was, it, was, it was a big deal. It was terrifying. And I, I remember during a commercial break running to the, our news production area and calling my mom and dad because yeah. you know, we kept getting word that, well, the, when the Pentagon happened, right. and I thought it was a construction accident because I right. covered the Pentagon. They were always doing construction. <clears throat> I, I just you could not wrap your your mind around what was going on and what no. was happening. And I told my parents. I called them. And I said, "You need to get in the basement," because I honestly yeah. thought the world was coming to an end. You just yeah. didn't know how many planes had been commandeered and hijacked, and you just didn't know when it was going to end. And you're right because. Everyone said to me, why don't you come and get your kids out of school? Right. I couldn't get my kids out of school. And furthermore, I thought school was probably the safest place for them. But you're dealing with all these personal anxieties, and yet you have to, you know you have this enormous responsibility to deliver the information to people who are just as confused as you are and just as terrified.